In this demo, we are going to discuss the case-based surveillance package. This includes two individual programs along with the analytical outputs that are included in this package. This demo is divided into three separate components. So please have a look at the separate video demonstrations to get a full overview of this package. In this first part of the demo, we will focus on the case-based surveillance program. This is the program that collects data on clinical examination, lab testing, and health outcome. The second overview will discuss the contact tracing and follow-up program. Lastly, the third overview will discuss some of the analytical outputs that are available. This package is configured to work on DHIS 233.2, and we recommend that at least this version of DHIS 2 is used when working with this package. As this package uses the tracker data model, this involves either the registration or searching for an individual. In our example, we can start by registering a new person into our program. We would only register a new case if it did not already exist in our system. You can see that you are mostly collecting demographic details to identify the case during this registration step. We can use any combination of these details to search for this case later on when required. All the details have been filled in, so I will select Save and Continue in order to proceed. After you have registered the case, or in the event you are finding an existing case and have selected them, you will be able to get an overview of the program. Let's have a look at the structure of the program as it is defined within this package. It consists of four separate processes that the case could potentially interact with. Clinical examination and diagnosis, lab request, lab result, and health outcome. The clinical examination and diagnosis process would likely occur directly after registration. You may have noticed that the date of consultation gets automatically populated with the same date that was selected during registration. This process has the largest number of sections and variables included within and is based off the variables collected from the WHO case reporting form. Logic has been used to hide and show fields based on the responses that have been entered. Upon first reviewing the form for the clinical examination and diagnosis, we only see a couple of fields in which data can be entered for. As we start to enter our data, more fields will appear to allow data to be entered. For example, if the case does not exhibit any symptoms, then this section will not expand. However, if they do have symptoms, related information can subsequently be entered. The same is true of the other sections within the clinical examination and diagnosis process. We can see examples of this in each section. For pregnancy details, which only appears for female cases. Underlying conditions. Hospitalization. Exposure risk. and the travel history. We see another section at the bottom for assigned date of onset of symptoms, which I will come back to later on when describing the outputs generated by this data. Our second process is the lab request. Let us say the case is identified as requiring a lab test. This lab request process has been created to support this operationally. Let's start off by selecting a date for when the lab request was made. The lab request process allows you to identify which samples you have collected, which tests you are requesting, and notify those who will be performing the test that they should be expecting a sample. As multiple samples can be collected, note that this process can be repeated as many times as required. 
you can see here that I am able to add an additional lab request and both lab requests are now recorded. Once the request has been sent and lab testing performed, a lab results process is also available to record the result of the testing that has been carried out. At the top of this lab results stage is a field assigned user. What we can do is actually assign the lab results to a user so when they log in they can filter out the cases that require their immediate attention. We have a feature spotlight that covers user assignment in much more detail. Please review it to get a more thorough overview of how to use this feature. You will notice that both the lab request and lab results processes are very limited in scope as they are not meant to replace any type of lab information system. However, they are simply meant to link all required data to a single individual and act as a summary for these two processes. Here we can enter the relevant details for this result. Note that just like the lab request, this process can also be repeated for each lab sample that has been received. This means we can have multiple lab results for each lab sample that needs to be processed. Lastly, we have the health outcome process. This process also includes an assigned user field for the same reason as the lab results stage is it allows this process to be assigned to a specific user in the system. You can see that this is also very simple and includes a limited number of fields. The health outcome is meant to be recorded when the outcome of the case has been assessed and is available. There is also some basic logic that has been incorporated which shows a relevant date field based on the outcome they have selected. You can see that overall, the package is set up to follow the case and be able to enter individual data related to this case based on the processes that are currently defined. These processes can be modified to meet local needs as required. As part of this package, contact tracing is also closely linked. We will continue to discuss contact tracing in the next part of this demonstration.